What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? What use are 20 cars and 18 room mansions and 12 baby mamas if you have to constantly look over your shoulder? In this episode of Untold Stories, we meet the grandfather of all that was smoked and sniffed, the original gangster, the only man in St. Lucia to be busted with over a million dollars in cold, hard cash. He watched as each of his rivals were hunted and killed, leaving him to tell the story. Tonight, we do not celebrate or glorify drug dealing. Instead, we lay out the flamboyant lesson in high definition for the elucidation of the next criminal wannabes and highlight the solitary, exciting, and transformational life of the last man standing. Gangsta is purple, I tell you family said that. When we say purple, we mean that. For the one somebody can get flat. Oh, we go. See it here. Uno better. Show me Uno. His face bears the signs of an arduous life. His fingers tell the tale of trauma. His walk is distinctly old school. His purple rag signifies life as the greatest gangster who ever lived. His name is Ronald Richardson, a.k.a. Wally. Born in Viewfort in 1941, he is the second of 13 children. By 13, he stored away on a steamship and landed in Trinidad. For two years, he lived out of abandoned vehicles and survived by being a prolific wharf rat. In time, he would find legitimate work and quickly began a Trinidadian family. As you go to the fish market, on morning and buy fish to sell if I go to work because I used to work for 320 a day. So my salary was $21 a week. And I have to pay rent, maintain my children. By 28, he had fathered five children. Buying and reselling fish couldn't support his growing tribe. But I used to sell it drug in Trinidad, a drug is called MX, a tablet, right? And from that, I went into the marijuana. I started buying half pong, and you know, I, in my area of lab until I used to sell two dollars, and you know, wherever people want, I used to sell them. And um, did you work for a bossman, or did you? No, myself. So you bought the weed and then sold. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, tell me about these early days. You mean was, uh, was it lucrative? Did you make a lot of money at that time? Well, um, that time money. Two dollars had value because I used to go in the supermarket with about fifteen. At that time, a pound of sugar was fifteen cents. Them years, right? A pound of rice was something like twenty cents. Flour was like thirteen cents a pound. So all them things was cheap. And you come back to St. Lucia, so you had a little bit of money with you. Not really. I must land there with about. Like about five hundred dollars. Tell me how life started in San Lucia. Well, I, I went back hanging out by the wharf with them bad guys, you know, stealing cars, you know, without license and driving around, and and then I pick up the, the drug trade in San Lucia. And tell me your first set of runs. Where did you where did you buy the weed from before you sold? Okay, I used to buy it on the federal boat. You hear about the federal boat? The federal maple and maple the federal and town. Right, right. And we used to buy it on the boat from Jamaica. But then at the time, we couldn't, they couldn't put it up because the police and the customs was watching that ship. And we fly to St. Vincent and we bought the weed in St. Vincent 
She put it over her belly like she's pregnant. Her tummy is looking big, eh? but they didn't have that security like now. So she get through with it. That was a Friday. A Friday, yeah. When you reach at my home in Leslie Land, this is Barrow. I know how they got to know, but about 8 o'clock the night they come and they search my home. And I bust the back door and I run. Tell me how you picked up from that. Well, you know, people knew me, you know, because at that time, the way the, the federal boat was still coming. And the engineer had knew me. So he gave me on consignment. He gave me trip on, on consignment. And his dice sad. And how much was the joint selling for at the time? Well, a joint was selling for $2, but I used to sell it 50 cents. Within short time, Wally graduated from nickel and dime purchases to importing his own compressed cannabis. We used to put the, the, the small 20 pound cylinder, we used to load it with, with the weed, cut it, we had anything to touch, we cut it, we wash it, make sure it have no smell of gas so it could blow up the touch. When it, and when we well wash it, we compress the weed in it. We weld it back with the touch. And then now, we buy a, a gas, a stove, them small flat stove. We get our receipt from the store that we purchase a gas and a, a, a stove, a flat stove, and from them it's custom. How else you all used to bring it in? Well, um, in shoes. In shoes? Yeah, leather shoes. How? Yeah, well, the false bottom. Yeah. You see like the sneakers you have there? Yeah, we, we, we put in a false bottom. With that shoe you have there, because we're compressing the wheel. It, the shoes will come about high like that. But which I tell you, at that time, custom wasn't so, you know, they didn't really know about it. With his competitors selling the same quality and the market demanding a higher grade, Wally's procurement moved to the mecca of marijuana. Out in the street, they call it murder. murder. Jump rock, jump where the thugs and jump at. I'll pay about 500 US for a suitcase of weed, which is about 50 pounds. 500 US for yeah. 50 pounds of weed? weed? To put it on the, the plane. But a pound of weed in Jamaica was, mm, what was it? About uh, 5 US a pound. When we fly, we, spend, we take nine hours from Jamaica to St. Lucia. When he reached, he had all custom was waiting for me. All big inspectors, they were just waiting at the airport. But I used to carry a DACA at that time. So when I when he played in land, I saw all them big fellas at the airport waiting for me. Because I went to Jamaica. He used to clean the plane. Then when I tell him police, he opened his suitcase. But he knew where, because he cleaned the plane, he knew where to hide the weed from the suitcase. So when I really come and take me on the plane, Cloud was custom that time. They had enough custom on them. They bring me to the, the airport. They, they put me naked. They make me open my behind. My hair used to plait that time. They make me unplait my head, looking for drugs all day. Now that guy died. I have a guy in Marshall, he see, but he, the guy didn't lie. The guy, he, he take the smell of the weed because where hide it, it looked like they had the exhaust of the plane, the heat of the plane. They were taking the smell. He said, I take the smell. Of the, I take the smell of the weed on the plane. That is a guard in khaki. So they seal the plane. They seal the plane next day to go and research it again. But they didn't form it. Me, this is Gabo. We make plan to go and take the weed because he, he know how to get to the plane. I make a plan for 8 o'clock to meet me. You know where you're going to Ganta? That them had a lot of guava. So, because the plane parking on the runway lower down. So we make plan for eight o'clock. But I just watched so much a movie, I tell this is Gabo. We go in there for seven o'clock. And a lot you wouldn't believe, the man reached about quarter past seven. Now that guava, me and this is Gabo hide below the bush, watching him. He come there with a white woman. He packed the, the mini moke. He jumped the barbed wire and he come with the two parcel of marijuana in the dark, eh? about minutes to eight. He threw it over the fence 
And when he jump over, I just appear on him. You know, like, he can't really believe I did because make plan for 8 o'clock. So what he would have do, he would have carried it away and then come back at 8 o'clock. So a lot of times when you see a movie, they'll say that it's Hollywood, happen real. Wally made several other trips to Jamaica, but soon his shipments became too heavy and ingenious methods needed to be employed. Was there ever a time when you had to go out at sea to meet the boat? Many times. Many times? Yeah, many times. One of the times. Well, I even realized the boat only passed in, so when the captain knew about it, he will anchor the boat for about two, three hours. Sometimes he knew when you pay him. Because if he go into Guadeloupe or what, he will call in for water or something, something. So, I mean, you have to go out there and, and collect. And what about Coast Guard at the time? They didn't have Coast Guard at the time. Coast Guard came in late after all them. Yeah, Coast Guard came in late. No Coast Guard, it's more custom. Was that the time when you had fishing boats? Yeah, I had five fishing boats. I know. Ricky. <laughs> Um, Gloria. Gloria. Mandy. Mandy. <laughs> um, what's the other one? Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah. Five of them. Yeah, um, yeah. Val. <laughs> Val. You get me? <laughs> they never bring drugs in, but like we, I used to go and buy fish. And um, I'd buy five boats of jackfish or skipjacks. And when the boat come in, the, the custom will pulling my boat at the, at, at the port in Cacheries, and some of them have to the fish spoil. Because like it's something like a deliberate thing, they will have to go and get papers and you know, it's fish. The sun giving and some of them have to the fish spoil. So that's why I get rid of I sell all the boat. And I buy a big ship. What a ship? Yeah, I bought a ship, yes. Tell me about the ship. Well, I bought a ship in Denmark. I went to Germany. You? Yes. Really? Yes. Went to Denmark? To Denmark and Germany. My ship started traveling to Trinidad, Puerto Rico, Antigua, Barbados, St. Vincent, Grenada. Until that time, I, I stole 1,200 people from Grenada to Trinidad. I went, Bishop had to take over. Yes. How you get that issue? I, I stole away 1,200 something children, people on that ship to Trinidad. And when it custom, that's some custom guy with blue and white shirt. They come with some long to but the captain was a very smart guy. He was a Spanish, my captain. He buy about five cases of whiskey. And when the fellas go in because the hatch, the people down in the bottom, we'd have been in jail all now. They, they, they call the guard, he give them five cases of whiskey, and everybody turned back. How did you get paid? We got paid before. We leave Grenada. 800, 500, we collect about 100 something thousand. At that time, what other legitimate businesses were these ships running? Well, I never, I never trafficked no drugs on the ship. You know viewers will find that hard to believe, right? Huh? You know viewers will find that hard to believe? No, no, I, I'm speaking the truth. I never trafficked no drugs on the ship because I should make enough. I just had it for a front. I just had it for a friend. I never used that a ship. very expensive front. Yes, I never used that ship to do anything like traffic. Because I know that, I, you know, they had my photo everywhere in the Caribbean. Barbados, Caracu, Grenada, everywhere. Sony, Abab and Bonnie were your Bonnie. rivals. Yes. And they started buying wheat from Jamaica. Jamaica. You got frustrated. Yeah. What did you do? I, I alone went to Colombia. When we return, the bionic weed from Colombia and the famous clash between Wally and Charles Cochon.
Need to know what the balance on your electricity bill is? Call Lucilex Automated Account Inquiry Service at 457-4433 and follow the prompts. Have your account number handy. You can find it here on your bill. It has seven digits and always starts with the number two. Get your electricity bill balance anytime. Call 457-4433. to KFC and get delicious food at a great price. Amazing deals, amazing taste every day. What a deal! $9.25 for a thigh, biscuit, and a 16-ounce drink. And if you can't live without KFC's delicious small fries, just add two seventy-five more. What a deal! KFC, finger licking good. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. There she goes, beauty in action. Clothes from H&H &H Women's Fashion. Dangling loosely her new bag from Cutie. Beauty Max for flowing hair and makeup to highlight flawless skin. The scent of Caribbean perfume lingers as she walks past. White gold and pearls from Anthony Jewelry screamed luxury and class. Essential vitamins and minerals, Mother Earth has it all. And to top it off, Matthew's Dining with Stunning Views. Only at Baywalk Mall. Introducing the all-new Blue Waters 5-gallon water bottle. The same great taste and quality of Blue Waters, now in an easy-to-carry 5-gallon bottle with handles. The perfect companion for your Blue Waters water cooler. And with the new non-spill caps, you can even change your water cooler bottles without removing the cap and spilling any water. Wow! Call or visit Blue Waters St. Lucia today and order your very own non-spill 5-gallon water bottles, coolers, and storage racks. Ideal for the home and office. No other water bottle comes close. Available island-wide at all leading supermarkets, gas stations, and the Blue Waters warehouse in Beauceju, Grosile. Delivery available on request. Blue Waters, the best tasting water now bottled in St. Lucia. Blue Waters, 100% manufactured in St. Lucia. So take a local Blue Waters break. The title chase is on. Follow every magnificent moment at home and on the go in stunning HD only with the Flow Sports Premier Pack. Live the passion and watch every game live each week with Flow on your TV, online and on the go using the new Flow Sports app. That's not all. Go behind the scenes with Man U TV, Chelsea TV and more. It's Premier League coverage you can't get anywhere else. Sign up for the Flow Sports Premier Pack today only with Flow. In the 1970s, Colombia achieved international notoriety as a major narcotics trafficking center. The real takeoff of Colombian marijuana production began in the mid and late 1960s as a result of the growing demand generated by the United States market. Between 30,000 and 50,000 small farmers along Colombia's Caribbean coast came to depend directly on marijuana cultivation for their livelihood. Ronald Richardson would travel from St. Lucia to Bogota in search of the next high, but getting it back to St. Lucia would be a logistical nightmare. From Colombia to Martinique, straight flight, from Martinique to St. Lucia, when it reached in the airport, the custom, <laughs> my custom will clear it. He will come and collect it early morning, six o'clock when you open the airport, and drop it in Lazy Run. Not at my home, a neighbor who knew about it. And then nighttime, about, about a little dark, I go and collect it and I go and store it where I store it. You had them fellas on your payroll? On my payroll. I used to pay them about, each ship about 8,000 at that time. There was a trip you made to Colombia. Mm -hmm. You were the lookout man. 
the, you left the hotel and um, you were on the airport first. Yeah. Oh, who tell about that? <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's my job to know about you. What? What? Mm -hmm. You want me to keep on? Tell me about the newspaper. Tell me how you knew that day. Now, you know you have to be very smart in them things. So I went at the airport first. And when I reach, I can't read Spanish, but I have a newspaper I read in. And I watch it and say, well, which, you know, which security, which police and then, when I bring, in, I bring in the suitcase and the, the either customer or whoever, he went and held the suitcase. Both of them. But I did like reading the papers. So when Franco, when Franco and them come, I talk to them in Padua. I tell them, well, police in Padua. So we take the suitcase now and our way back to the hotel, we get pulled up. But the Corino de Empes have a lot of soldiers. Franco had a gold chain, Franco, we give it to them, and something like a hundred years, I can't remember, we give it to them. So when we reach in the hotel, I say, fellas, we can't travel with that weed because, you know. So we take a little, a little portion, it wasn't anything much. We fly to Carousel. When you reach in Carousel, this is Boney, had set me up. So, because they knew I was going to Colombia, because they were trying to wipe me up completely. So when I reached at the airport, all our free immigration card would be properly folded. Because you have, to be, you have to be on. So I tell, I, when I watch, they watch him, they watch me, they watch, because I already know who went to Colombia. So the, girl, the guard say, tell Franco, and Moses, he said, but then that immigration is not full proper. So right there, I tell Franco in Patua, in Patua, eh? Franco Patouche Anye. Because you can't speak in Patouche Anye. Mahi Tikea, you know what I mean? You see the ticket that attached to the luggage? It was on his ticket, you know, there's. So by all means, if I get that ticket, you have choice it to the luggage. So quick thinking. I say, Franco, eat the ticket. That's why I respect that boy. Franco just take the, 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 the ticket and he put it by his mouth, although he had the staple in it, and he, he threw it. He threw it. That's why anything I've had to get that boy. So then when he sits on the luggage, then they, they, they come for the ticket now. Remember the ticket have the, the tag. No trace. So they bring us in the room put us naked because they know we have the drugs, there's drugs on the belt swinging, eh? but you can't trace it because no tag. That was just one of the shipments from Colombia. I it? make several shipments for years. For years I make a lot of shipments, 800 pounds, and I used to make 10,000 a day. Some make more, but you know, um, I used to pay my workers 350 a day. At that time, it's no lie. No lie. It's all kind. All kind. I'm a money making guy. Them can't stop me no matter how them I try. Now ease up on more pressure me apply. For my family, fans and friends, them proud of I. When about 8 o'clock, I close. I make 10 grand flat. I used to pay them every Monday. Well, yeah, but some of the workers, if they want the money, I pay them the same day, 350 a day. Because some of them used to wear, they used to wear suit every day. Suit every day. What you mean? A suit every day. What do you mean a suit? They were selling drugs in suits. No, they said the, the, the fellas who used to rap. When they get the money, when they finish work in the afternoon, they go and they put a suit in them. Different, different style of shoes and suits and every day. Because they used to make a thousand eight a week. Remember the guy called Bob Marley? Yeah. The guy had it called Bob Marley. That's the one with burning on the side? Burning, yeah, that's burning. Right, yeah, burning. Heard about that car. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You had a bluebird as well? Yeah. I had a car print too. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. And um, the pickup named Hypocrite. Hypocrite, yeah. I had a car print. I, should, I parked weed in it for over 12 years. The weed used to be there in the car. 
for years. And when I went about the 10 pounds, I just taken a car, driving it somewhere by your side. Shad um, Shad um, how do you call the place again? Um, Shabot. And I, my wife did take out 10 pounds, still back the car, park it there. And nobody ever suspected that you had all of this week. You see, at that, that you see, at that time, people wasn't, you know, for over 12 years from when I get my shipment, it's in the car. The yard was a social place where everybody used to come and smoke. But all them bank women I had, all them covered them, um, that CIBC, no, C yeah, CIBC, all them bank women, so when they come and smoke, they can't go back to work, because they ban it, put them down. They had a little house there. When they smoke, they, they can't go back to work. You have to get sweet water, wash the face. Mr. And... So did you have a gun? I had a lot. You had a lot of guns? I had a lot. A lot. Do you remember your first gun? My first gun was um, it was a German looker from a white man. And I think I uh, well, it's so long, yeah, but I had I had a, a wicked piece of German looker. What are the guns that you had? Well, I had a 25 that time. I had a 32, 40, 45. I had different guns. You had a whole 45 to yourself. Mm -hmm. Police never search your house to get them. But we used to hide it below the house, bury it. And bust the, the flooring, but all around the house still. And we used to hide it very deep. We used to hide it, send little children and hide it where the police can reach. You know, the, the, the place is so flat that they can't reach. But the little children, about nine years, used to go dig it and hide it properly. Tell me about your relationship with your competitors. Abab, Boni. Um, Sony, these guys, they were selling drugs the same way you were selling drugs. Yeah, but they, they tried to assassinate me. He stood six feet two inches and was built like a Buick with flowing dreadlocks. His name drove fear into the hearts of policemen as much as it did in fellow criminals. With a penchant for strong arm robbery, his peeve was shocking colored clothing. Undoubtedly, he was St. Lucia's most terrifying citizen. Describe Charles Pusho. Okay, what he used to do, he used to hold women and go and have sex with him in the square. He was a bad fella. Or he used to just spit in your face. Or he just, let me see what you have in your bag. Search your pocket, take your money. Now he did, Abab sent him and do that in my yard, take my drug. And he, he attacked the wrong man. I chop him in the cinema. Clark Cipri was going and I chop him in his head, in his face. I didn't care and people started running, who break the leg and thing. And he spent six weeks at hospital because I chopped him real bad, you know. Wally was sent to Her Majesty's Hotel for two years for that crime. But the war had just begun. I smuggled a gun in the jail. And my gun in the jail. When I hear Rick and him on the fire with them bandits, I call the warder. Because you know, a lot this place alone you have money. My wife was waiting for me by the gate. I call the warder, I tell him I want to go outside, I put a gun by his head. Yeah. The thing was really hard. Hold on. You a whole prisoner, you have a gun. Yes. You so bad now, you're going to put the gun. I put it on the prisoner to open the gate. Open the gate over midnight and I turn on the fire. And my wife come and pick me up. But that happened, Larry, but I put my military clothes on me. I took all the prison clothes, I put it in the car. She had a Honda, the car park right there. I took all my, put the military, and head for Leslie Land. I had a, a, a bottle that took to the bullet alone. The big shots. And when I reached way going in my area by the standpipe, shots are fine now until about a whole four hours. I alone, because my train almost get shot that night. Shot, one of my workers get shot, and shot fired by the toilet there. Shot fired non stop the I think two of them get shot. Next morning, I walk 8 o'clock back to the prison. My wife, I was driving. I gotta get killed. And I reverse the car. I take all the military clothes on me. I put the prison clothes back on me. I walk in the prison. My man. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. Man. From a good table. I walk in back into the prison. You escaped from jail. 
I didn't went escape. Out to, well, yeah, you're right. You yeah. escaped. Yeah, yeah. You went out to wage a war. Yes. When you were finished with your war, yeah. you reported yourself back to back the prison. Back to the prison. And while I was there in the prison, they used to give the prisoners old food. Like if they cook the breadfruit on morning, quite in the afternoon. I call a strike. I said that I have to stop. You call a strike. I call a strike in the call prison. A, you call a strike in the prison. At Her Majesty's. Prison. Yes. And that night, it lasts till that time. That minister, Orland, he was a minister. That night, that that night, they brought cases of by dozen cases of beef, Milo. Just name it, and all old food stop. Drugs will always have double crossing. It will, yes. Any of your guys have a double cross you? Yeah. This is Ghana. How? Well, he, he take influence on Bonnie. Because, you know, he that was going to get here and Franco. But at one of my workers, he kicked one of my workers, this is Gabo. So I said, not because he woke in for us, you have to kick him. No, he find out I should have support him, which is this is Gabo, because he woke, he going to take drugs from me. So if he do anything, I suppose to support him now. So he break up with me. And he went on his own. But I set him up. I tell a Frenchman, because it was my connection. I call him and I tell him, that man come with drugs. And when he reached at the airport, he, was, he could have run. When he come to arrest him at the airport, <clears throat> because he know how the weed was coming, he burst through the wood, through the airport, because the airport have a lot of wood close by. And somehow, they hold him, but he escaped in prison. He escaped in Martinique. Some would say that you broke the code. The code is don't talk. You mean this is Gabo? Yeah. Some yeah. would say that you broke the code. He was with you for a long time, you all broke up. Yeah. You should not have but he, on him. But he tried to kill me. If they bring 800 pounds of weed, Franco could tell you that. 200 is Franco Hoon, 200 is this is Gabo. I get him four. Okay, if I sell weed for two weeks, I close in on my market in the yard and Franco or this is Gabo selling. So it was. Bob Marley described them perfectly. And the worst was it's yet so to come. Unjust, children. When you raise the gun, I just hold the gun. And I just push the knife in him. It's like when a pipe bursts, just with that sweet blood. And the doctor say, if that knife had go by an inn, I would have been there for murder. From marijuana to cocaine, a drug dealer donates $100,000 for drug rehabilitation. And later... And when, I, when he cut me, I feel my whole guts came out. to KFC and get delicious food at a great price. Amazing deals, amazing taste every day. What a deal! $9.25 for a thigh, biscuit, and a 16-ounce drink. And if you can't live without KFC's delicious small fries, just add $2.75 more. What a deal! KFC, finger-licking good. Come on, come on, turn the radio on, it's Friday night.
what the balance on your electricity bill is? Call Lucilex Automated Account Inquiry Service at 457-4433 and follow the prompts. Have your account number handy. You can find it here on your bill. It has seven digits and always starts with the number two. Get your electricity bill balance anytime. Call 457-4433. Introducing the all-new Blue Waters 5-Gallon Water Bottle. The same great taste and quality of Blue Waters, now in an easy-to-carry 5-Gallon Bottle with handles. The perfect companion for your Blue Waters water cooler. And with the new non-spill caps, you can even change your water cooler bottles without removing the cap and spilling any water. Wow! Call or visit Blue Waters St. Lucia today and order your very own non-spill 5-Gallon Water Bottles, coolers and storage racks. Ideal for the home and office. No other water bottle comes close. Available island-wide at all leading supermarkets, gas stations, and the Blue Waters Warehouse in Bosejou, Grosile. Delivery available on request. Blue Waters, the best tasting water now bottled in St. Lucia. Blue Waters, 100% manufactured in St. Lucia. So take a local Blue Waters break. Drugs, power, and money breeds violence and violence begets violence. Wally's violent attack on Charles Kushaw boomeranged with deadly consequences. You chop Charles? Yeah. Twice. What happened next? What did Charles do to you? He cut my belly. Franco was there the night because Franco was scared of him. Franco was there the night talking to him. So I wanted Franco to walk because we always walk at night for the police. Eight o'clock, you know, you can't come and sit your home. So they tell me from the back. My boat had just come up with, with fish, my five boats. So they tell me from the back. You know, you ever hear about Dr. Rivier? Yeah. Right. You see, in life you have to go that same day, Dr. Rivier, I come and buy jackfish. I give him a whole bag. I say, Doc, go. Like God has just guided me, Doc. And that same afternoon, about seven o'clock the night or eight, like, Franco, Franco in the backyard, Franco not answer me because I feel the charge for I know with him, do answer. So when I went, I said, but Franco, I call you to walk and... So the same, I just see a black hand go over my, something black over my face, my eyes. So fast thinking, Elliot, I put my hand, you see, you see that mark I have there? See that mark? I put it. So that's why I alive today. So, my guts. So I end up in the backyard to the front. So my guts was in my hand, my whole guts. Then my wife put a driver, I had a Suzuki that time, a mini mook. While my wife drive me to hospital, you know, straight by the beach, blood, the Suzuki, chow, chow, blood, blood. So Dr. River was on call. God walks again. When the nurse called him, he tell the nurse, Mr. Richardson alive? She said, yes, he said, well, if you're alive, I'm coming. Wally lived to tell the tale, and that signal, the end of the war between the rivals. Tell me about the, the mansion in Bocage. It was 18 rooms. 18, 18 rooms, yes. Two stories. I had rooms all the way. You were making so much money. Why didn't you just stay in the big house? Why did you continue to come down to the yard every day? Good question. Again, you know, when you're young, you, you do a lot of things. When you're reaching, coming in age, you're sitting about it, right? Sure. Because I built that house for my children, us to stay up there. But you know, again, the yard was a yard that a lot of criminals would come in the yard and try to rob the guys and, you know, put guns on them and take their belongings. So I had to be there. Tell me about the lookout system. Um, there, there were a series of people along the way that would be able to send the message back before the police got Oh yeah, man, they had guys in all different. In the out there. In the out there. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it would have about four men. So when they say, in the out there, the next one will say, he's close to the yard. In the out there, many police come in, so we could have them fix up everything. The move from marijuana into cocaine. Big move. Yeah. Where did you first get the idea? How did you get your first shipment of cooking? 
the, my first shipment, I bought, I bought one ounce for six hundred dollars. Then I bought the next ounce for him. I bought the next ounce from him. Until I make enough, I go to go to. I, I could go to Trinidad. Let's talk about how were you getting rid of twenty kilos of cocaine? But I was the only man that had the market. You were the only person selling cocaine. Like in that big stats, because when you buy. When you buy twenty-five dollars worth of cooking for them other guys, you get mm. But when you buy twenty from you, you get three. So with that, you know, you're making about fifty profit. I hope you understand. The guys sell for twenty-five a little piece, mm -hmm. but my piece now. When you buy it, some of them will make a hundred eighty profit with the twenty, which a hundred. But with them guys, twenty-five, they wasn't making. You just take it a sniff. So that's why you make about forty thousand a day. I'm broad. I used to sell by key too, I used to sell a key for 30,000, 25,000. Were you breaking it up and making crack with it? The lady used to boil it, sometimes she boiled about five for night. What did you mix it with? No, you don't mix it anything, you just boil it with soda to get it hard, you don't mix it anything. But now they mix it with a thing they call cut, latouche, you about latouche? Mm -hmm. They mix it with that. So what they do in Colombia now, when they buy it in Colombia, they go to Venezuela, Venezuela cut it. They mix it, they make one key, make two. So when you buy a key from them now, when you go and boil it, you only get half key. So I have no money, you have no money again. You had a, your famous chemist, Kenson. That was your chemist, right? He's come all the way down and, and boiled for me. He was good. <laughs> you know all that? <laughs> you investigate bad, I'm How do you know all them things? Hmm? Job to know. Okay, okay. Mr. Wally, how were you making that money, considering that there wasn't a, a big part of the population on crack cocaine? Well, uh, well, you see, think about it, they used to buy and go and distribute it like Soufre, Suazel, Denry. I used to make 10,000 Denry alone on a fortnight, 10 grand. You don't have a lot of people can cook in. Probably now, you won't have a lot of people that used to cook in. I used to have 300 kids and I used to sell. How did you see the addicts change from marijuana smokers to cocaine users? You know how they change? How did their behavior change? How did society change? Well, for me, the marijuana was better than the cocaine. You know why, like, you know, people's house won't break like that. Or like the, 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 the weed was something like to meditate, you will smoke weed, music playing, you enjoy it, you, you sit down, you smoke your weed, you talk. But with the crack cooking, like, it, it's a crime, it's a crime job. That's why I really leave it alone too. I don't like to see how the family, some family end up, break up, you know, they lose their job, they lose their wife, the children go on the street. With the weed, it won't do that. But you were responsible for doing that. Well, it's a fact, but I didn't bring, I didn't go and push one in anybody's pocket. Because that was international, worldwide, all America. But in the same token, Mr. Wally, you didn't push your hand in their pocket and right. you did not break into the people's homes. Right. But you provided yes. the drugs that made them do that. Had your drugs not been there, they would not have done that. That's right. But what's about the other people who, but it's not me alone who sell cocaine is a loser. When you fall asleep at night, doesn't it bother you that friends you knew now go on to pain? Not really. You know, if it's something I had, like, okay, like I had invented and then, you know, because I, find, I found cooking there, it was all over before I'd even born. Let's take a break. When we come okay. back, I want to know about the cigarette boots and also the Colombians coming to St. Lucia. Okay.
head to KFC and get delicious food at a great price. Amazing deals, amazing taste every day. What a deal! 9.25 for a thigh, biscuit, and a 16-ounce drink. And if you can't live without KFC's delicious small fries, just add 275 more. What a deal! KFC finger licking good. Welcome to Holland. Welcome to the country of the world's most famous farmers. This is where your Frisian flag milk comes from. <laughs> Taste our nature at its best. Frisian flag. Discover the goodness of milk from Holland. To protect appliances from lightning, rain and flood water damage, unplug them, then turn off the main switch. Lightning can produce electrical surges which can damage equipment. Protect your electronics from water damage as well. Make sure you have flashlights, battery powered radios and extra fresh batteries available. Be smart, stay safe. It's the power Birds flying high, you know how I feel. There she goes, beauty in action. Clothes from H&H &H Women's Fashion. Dangling loosely her new bag from Cutie. Beauty Max for flowing hair and makeup to highlight flawless skin. The scent of Caribbean perfume lingers as she walks fast. White gold and pearls from Anthony Jewelry screamed luxury and class. Essential vitamins and minerals, Mother Earth has it all. And to top it off, Matthew's Dining with Stunning Views. Only at Baywalk Mall. He is 71 years old. He stands 5 feet 9 inches. He has fathered 37 children. He moved from being a wharf rat in Trinidad to being a multi-millionaire in St. Lucia. In the 70s, his pouncing ground was the Leslieland community, where he carved a niche market of marijuana smokers. Cocaine was a new global goodie, and his pushers graduated from grass to powder, from making $10,000 daily to an astonishing $40,000 each day. When you went into cocaine, yeah. you were making a lot more money than when you were in marijuana. A lot, yeah. Tell me how life changed for you. Well, the young fellas decide now, you know, they will rob, you know, you, they will, you'll give them the drugs, they will rob you. And I have to give account to the big man, because when they give you the drugs, you have to pay or else. The moment you pay, they, 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 they slice you up. They go with your head. Either they cut the throat or they go with the head. They will come with a cigarette. What we do, we, we, we light some tires on the beach. So the moment I light the tire, they say if I didn't know well, they clear. So tell me what you do, they come in like a shark because of a cigarette. In second, they reach a shore already. And four of them will jump off, two running down, two with the motion gun in their hand, making sure that everything, you know, and then when everything, all right, I have two drum of gas, two cases of whiskey, and um, Kentucky, you have a lot of Kentucky. <laughs> they came to deliver drugs and they took Kentucky from you. <laughs> yes, but they, you, you look at it, you know, but they're hungry, you know, and then they will take the Cuba, they have, 75 here, 75 here, 75 here. It's like 300. And they'll take it off. By that time, it's cocoa and I still live. And my mother may go. She'll store it up. Her uncle will hide it proper. And they, we, we, it's the only beach we crack jokes. They eat the chicken, the whiskey, the coffee, big flask of coffee, and they burst it. Next, back to, yeah. Next morning, the big man called me about eight, 10 o'clock and said he was rich already. Because that boat was fast. Did you ever ship drugs out of St. Lucia? Yes, England, Barbados. What was that process like? Because 
we've heard a lot of you importing it into St. Lucia, but how were you able to get it out? Yeah, well, to England on the banana boat, tourist boat. When the tourist boat come inside there, the guys go about three, four keys. Because yeah, which I tell you, the security wasn't as tough as now. You could have walked you could have walked in a ship anyhow. Mr. Wally, we've heard stories of drugs in banana boats going to England. You were involved in that? No, nah, that one wasn't me. Did you ever send people on flights to England? Yes. America too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you convince them? But they can't pay. So you'll be getting about 2,000 pounds just for about a couple hours. And if they never get caught? Well, they make the prison. For you, knowing that somebody went on a run for you, and for the next six years, eight years, they're behind bars, what was that like for you? Well, nobody will like it, but what I mean is you're getting pay. So if you don't want it, you don't take it. But it will, it will, it will bother you and say, oh shit, man, you may not want to get bus. You might take care of his family. Did you ever use cocaine? Never. No, oh, man, I never use that. Never. You know people will find this very hard to believe. But I never, but if I never, but I'm telling you, I never use cocaine. I used to smoke weed, yes. And I just, after I just leave it. Drugs and violence go hand in hand. Did you ever have to put licks on anybody who stole your product? Yeah, man. At a prison. At a prison, yeah. Down Coco and I used to bring them down and beat them, handcuff them and beat them. You had a prison? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, if, if I give my drugs and you pay me and you're hiding, when I capture you, me and my boy, I put you, I tie you on a day, I will beat you bad. And the rest of your family would know that you'd have to beat up these people? But they're dead, they see him. So they will say, in part of you'll kill the man, just leave him alone. I'll still beat him. Wally moved from here to Kokodan in Viewfort. Now, he was able to purchase in ginormous shipments, which were delivered to his doorstep by Spanish-speaking salesmen. Wally was the ancient Robin Hood who sold drugs, yet donated sporting equipment to the national football team, fish to the Victoria Hospital on a regular basis, mattresses to Her Majesty's prison, and even provided $100,000 to Turning Point Drug Rehabilitation Center. On that famous day, dozens of special service unit and drug squad officers descended on the home of the island's most prolific drug dealer. They came in search of drugs, but what they found was so much more liquid. We're there, we see they come in because we know we clean all we have is money. Gold, well, gold like probably a whole bag of gold. You know, diamond and all kind of thing. And when they come, they really warrant for drugs for Gun. They got a gun I'd buy from a fella. That gun would kill a man. Where was the money hidden? No, I had the money on my bed. I had money everywhere in the house. Because I didn't have them, so I didn't have them. The amount of money I had to have them check. The amount of money I used to make. I make about 40 grand a day. All kind of currency, in US. How do you end up with a million dollars in your house, bro? Why didn't you bank it? Why didn't you bank it in small amounts? No, no, they was trying, it had a time when they were trying to, they didn't, they, they stopped taking my money in the bank. They were like, it was drug money. A million dollars. Plus, all that gold. A lot. And you're in jail, mm -hmm. depending on your, law, your lawyer, to get you off again. He didn't get me off because he wanted to make money. They give me, they give me four years, and I make it, I make eight months. How did you feel knowing that I mean, you were Syrian for so long, she there with you. Too thick and thin, but now she has to do jail time because of you. How did you feel? Bad.
and regrets them. Mm-hmm. It didn't worth it. Your name and your reputation says old time gangster, old time drug dealer. But that name and that legacy has been passed on to your children. And now people look at them the very same way. As a father, how does it make you feel that people look at your children as budding drug dealers? Well, let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you. That don't bother me, you know why? That must be about 50 years ago. But today, even you know the amount of big men that involved in drugs, so that's why you don't bother so me. So if your son came tomorrow and said, Daddy, I want to make a run to England, what would you say to him? No, but if I tell them that, okay, like the same thing when they have come to me and tell me that, and I say, boy, it's very dangerous right now. All the loss of brother by that. It's left to you if you want to go, but I personally wouldn't advise you to go. So if they go on, they're on their own, that is them. Because if I tell you, it's right now I was in it, and it's because of the Almighty God I alive today, and you want to go in it, it's left to you. I can't tell you, if I tell you no, and you want to go, I can't do anything. It's your own mind. Because right now, that job trade is a problem. Them old thinking conscious gone food. You come and tell me, say you're rude. All I say, you're glad you're Now that the cars are gone, the pretty, pretty women, they're gone. Mm-hmm. A lot of the money is gone. Mm-hmm. Looking back at it 50 years on, what is the one lesson that you've learned? Everybody will want, you know, easy money. I had 12 vehicles. I can buy a prelude for 120 for Syrian every time I build it. Four prelude. Yeah, buy a prelude for 120,000. Know, build a nice house and live big, travel in blind everywhere. Enjoy life. Man. To the next young man who's probably watching this and looked up to you, heard stories about you, the great warrior. Mm-hmm. who just now start bustling, selling his drugs on the street and the figure boy buys a new ride and he's invincible. What would you say to him? Well, what I would say to him is that is not 30, 40, 50 years ago. It's very dangerous right now. Because you know you have a lot of red eye, people get jealous of you very fast. Especially they see well, boy that man just come in the market, that man have a Wicked ride, boy. The man have a bad home, man. You know, the man flashing thousands of dollars. They might, they might soon dig it. They might soon put him down. You advise him with me? Quit. That's what I've said. The plan must be led. The hunger must be fed. Look into my eyes, tell me what you see. Can you feel my pain? Am I your enemy? Give us a better way. Things are really bad. The only friend I know is this gonna have. Listen to my voice. This is not a threat. No, you say the Out of all of the other drug dealers, why do you think you're the last man standing? Because I did good. I did a lot of charity to people. I didn't take advantage of people like... We all make mistakes, but they, they did more than me. They, sh- they kill people, they shoot people, burn people's house. I never do that. That is why I alive today. Life is a cycle, and only good can follow good. The decisions we make in our youth can only seal our future old age. It cannot erase a lifetime of apologies and regrets that we may have, evading capture and living vicariously off of illegal exploits, ends but one way. Karma can and will only serve us what we rightly deserve. Wally Richardson has turned a new leaf in his twilight years. Church sees him often. He tries mending broken relationships with his three dozen children and shares words 
which can deter others from following his solid legacy. His most sincere apology is his changed behavior. The era of the last man standing has long faded. Imprisonment and eventual death awaits the next criminal wannabe. Peace.